This morning we'll be talking about Horry County's probate court. After you meet our guest, you judge whether or not we're in good hands. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at Conway Medical's Wellness and Fitness Center. We're focused on Horry County's probate court, and we're visiting with the Honorable Didra Edmonds, our probate judge. Good morning, Didra. Good morning, do you Craig. mind if I call you Didra? No, please do. As opposed to the Honorable, I guess normally you're wearing a black robe, as we talked about earlier Usually this morning. Usually at work I am. It's nice to see you nice out of a robe. You. Yeah. Thank you. So, what about this Conway Medical Wellness and Fitness Center? It's incredible. You know, this is the first time I've been here. Is that right? It is, and it's so nice. Early I just can't on a Friday how morning, how big it is, and um, all this equipment. It would be nice to have an opportunity to come out and yes. exercise a little bit. Did you imagine you'd wake up this morning and be sitting in a green chair on a basketball court? <laughs> oh. No, no, you nor me. That's right. And I know you're getting over a little cough right now. Yes, so, I am. Uh, it's tough to get up early in the morning to get in here, but thank you very much for coming in. You know, Thanks we think about me. the probate court. That's a very foreign term to a lot of folks. Even that word probate, what exactly does that mean? Well, probate is a term that we use to talk about administering or handling a person's estate, a person's property after they pass away. Okay. And it's a procedure that the families have to go through in order to take property that a person owned at the time of their death and get that property out of that person's name and get it retitled and distributed to the proper heirs of the estate or to the people designated under their last will and testament. Mm -hmm. So even if folks have a really proper will they still, and everything, they're still going to have to uh, In most cases. This. Right. You know, and it really depends on the extent of their property, what they own, and how they own that property, whether it's real property, whether it's assets in a bank or savings accounts, stocks, bonds, investments. It depends on how they own that property, whether it's in their name, whether it's with right of survivorship, mm -hmm. whether there's a beneficiary designation, and then who's going to get that property. And some property may pass without having to come through the probate court. Really? But Yes. What but, are some examples of that? Well, like your life insurance, for example. Uh -huh. If you name an individual, a trust, um, as a beneficiary of your life insurance policy, then that doesn't actually have to come through the probate court for your beneficiaries to get that property. Mm -hmm. If you have an account at the bank and it's with the right of survivorship, then we call that non-probate property. And it doesn't actually pass under your will or it doesn't pass by intestacy through the probate administration process. So mm -hmm. a person at the time of their death may have what we call probate property, which is going to pass under their last will and testament or by intestacy and must be administered through the probate court. And they may also have non-probate property that you don't have to administer through the probate court after they pass away. There are instances, though, where a life insurance policy may go through probate court. It, it, it may, because sometimes you may name beneficiaries on the policy, and your beneficiary may have predeceased you, or maybe you've named a spouse as your beneficiary, and you're now divorced from your spouse, mm -hmm. and there's not a contingent beneficiary on the policy, or maybe you've named your estate as your beneficiary, and mm -hmm. then it would come through your estate and be administered through the probate court. Mm-hmm. So oftentimes, and I know you're not giving legal advice here or even insurance advice, so oftentimes folks go use their insurance policies to take care of any debts associated as opposed to going to an individual. And I guess if some of it dealt with real property or paying off mortgages or otherwise, that would be an instance where it really would need to That's come right. through your and, and, and oftentimes people will have a small insurance policy and they would want to use that maybe to pay for their funeral expense. Right, right. And having that payable to the estate allows those funds to be accessible by your personal representative who can then use those funds to pay your funeral expenses or whatever estate administration expenses you may have. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes the families will use the policy even if it's payable to a beneficiary and then use that to pay the funeral expenses, mm -hmm. but they're not obligated to do that. Making it payable to the estate gives the estate, the personal representative, access to those funds to use it for whatever they need. What's a personal representative? A personal representative is the person that is appointed through the probate court okay. who we give the legal authority to handle a person's affairs after they pass away. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that are responsible for collecting all of your assets, right. for paying any creditor claims or debts of the estate, 
and then for distributing those assets to the persons entitled to the property after your death. Okay. They also represent the estate in any legal proceedings mm. in the event that there's some type of claim that the estate or that the deceased person had against a third party as a result of the death or even before death. So they may continue litigation right. that the person was involved in. They may deal with the mortgages and the real estate and all the assets and settle any claims, bring any claims that they may need to, mm -hmm. and then collect those assets and distribute them at the end of the administration. That's very serious stuff, Didra. I mean, we're really talking about very important issues. You know, you Certainly. think if, if, I'm, if a viewer is crafting a will, can they decide who their personal representative will be, or Absolutely. does the probate court decide that? Well, the, if a person has a last will and testament, then that's one of the things that they're going to do in their will. They're going to okay. designate and nominate who they want to be the personal representative. Often, though, when people die without a will, it's going to be left up to the probate court. Our state law sets forth a list of people that have priority to be appointed in the right. event that there's not a will. Uh -huh. Oftentimes, if you have a person that has several children, they may have equal priority. And if they can't agree on who's going to be appointed, then the matter becomes a contested issue before the probate judge. Boy, wow. Again, very serious matters. And I guess it, it truly is important uh, to work hard to make sure folks craft a will and keep it up to date. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's extremely important. We have many people that come in and they either try to prepare the will themselves. Maybe they got a form from an office supply company. Maybe they got something off the Internet. Or maybe they use somebody else's will, and they just whited out the names, and they put their names in there, and, and they end up creating so many problems when they do that. Mm, it's, mm. Sometimes it's, I think it's better to, to even die without a will than to take it upon yourself to try to do it yourself. It is a legal document right. that's going to have some legal effect after your death, and it's important to take it seriously and have it properly executed and drafted for you right. by a professional. So the, if someone couldn't go to a website, for instance, they couldn't even go to the Horry County Probate Court website and find sample wills no, or otherwise. This is really have, something that that's you right. stay away from that and make sure that attorneys or other that's professionals right. are involved in crafting That's exactly them. right. We have all the probate forms necessary to administer an estate on our right. website. These are forms that are adopted by our Supreme Court right. for use in the probate court. But we don't have wills yeah. on our website. Now, we also do have on our website the South Carolina form for a health care power of attorney. Good. That is available on the website. That's the form that's set forth in our code of laws. So we have the health care power of attorney on the website, and we also have the living will on our website because those are statutory forms right. that were adopted by our legislature. Good. A last will and testament needs to be specially drafted for a person by an attorney. Right. And so we don't offer those on the website. Sure, that's good. Speaking of that, if a viewer needs to get off to work now or get family off to school, what is the website and is there a good phone number that someone could learn more about the Horry County Probate Court? Certainly. Our office is located in Conway. We also have an office in South Strand and oh, in good. the Little River area. The Conway number is 915-5370. Right. Okay. We have a website. It is under the Horry County Government slash Probate Court. Okay, so is that the oricounty.org slash probate court? Org, good, yes. good. And it's got a lot of great frequently asked questions on there. I it went does. on there earlier this morning and saw some tremendous stuff on there. I want to give folks, if they don't have access to the Internet, though, you've got, I'm sure, a number of folks in the office that could help answer Absolutely. questions. And the 843-915-5370 number is probably a very good one to call. That is. Are you originally from the area, Didra? No, I'm not. I'm originally from Aiken County. Okay, so I've been, you're a Palmetto State native, though. I am a South Carolinian at heart, and I've been in Horry County for about 20 years. Great. What brought you here? Um, job. When I got out of law school, um, I came to work in Horry County for the Bellamy Law Firm, straight okay. out of law school. And, you know, Greg, it was 20 years ago next month that yes. I graduated from law school. So Is that right? It's amazing. It goes very fast. That is amazing, and, and very quickly that the Bellamy Law Firm brought you down, and you, I think I saw you spent about a decade there. I did. I spent 10 years with the Bellamy Law Firm, and then I moved down on the south end of the beach with Catherine D'Angelo and practiced with her for about four and a half years before I ran for probate judge. Is that right? Yeah. Catherine Cook D'Angelo has got a great practice down there. She does. There. Yeah. Focuses a lot on probate and elder law, and that's what I did a good bit of at the Bellamy Law Firm, so it was a good fit for me. I saw her get sworn into the bar of the U.S. Supreme Court on a Did trip you? when uh, Chief Justice Toll 
had folks up, a big group of uh, female women attorneys. I yes. went up with an old friend of mine to see her get sworn in. It was the same day Catherine was sworn in. It was a very nice ceremony. And Chief Justice told us this great event and getting a big group of uh, female attorneys together to tra make the trip to Washington. And uh, it's a great idea. I hope a lot of states do that. Yes. I hope they do. So, of course, had you thought about in growing up in Aiken County, did you, that you'd wanted to, A, be an attorney or ever even contemplated being a judge? I, I never contemplated being a judge, wow. no. Uh, it was when I was in college that I finally decided I did want to go into law. Right. And so I began to focus in that area. And once I graduated from undergraduate at USC, then I went on to law school. You went straight into law school. Straight into law wow. school from, yeah. from college. Yes, I did. What is law school like for viewers who may not be familiar with it? What do you learn there? Well, you know, law school gives you such a big background in the area of law. You don't focus on one area at all. Oh, really? You just get a broad background. You, you go in and study constitutional law and criminal law and civil procedure and real right. property and trust in estates and evidence and rules of professional conduct and so yeah. forth. It is a big, broad background in the area of law. And it teaches you not only how to, how to learn about the law, and it teaches you a lot of individual things about the law, but it teaches you then how to research the law and how to go forward after you practice law and, and after you graduate from law school and then go into the practice of law and go forward and research, right. prepare legal documents and pleadings and, and things of that nature. It's not as hands-on sometimes as far as the practice of law that maybe I think it could be, but it gives you that broad background mm -hmm. in the legal field of learning many different things. I mean, I was amazed when I went to law school that they had so many laws about so many different things. It was right. astounding, really, to walk into that law school and see all the books written on laws. A very broad education then. Very. I remember my grandmother who practiced law for many years referred to it as a gentleman's education, much like taking Latin in school, something that really... I took Latin in college. Right? Yes, yes, I did. In college, wow. Yes, I did. Something that folks needed to do to get a little broad understanding in, in Latin in that instance of the English language itself and in law school of uh, really so many different aspects. You Absolutely. talked about them when you mentioned contracts or real property or... Uh, uh, when folks hear civil procedure, that may not mean much to them, but it surely impacts their daily life. Absolutely, it, it does. It really does. And probate, of course, now, not necessarily their daily life, but uh, surely will impact them at their death. It will. And it impacts so many people when they don't think it will and yeah. when they don't expect it. We have many people come to the probate court who are unprepared, who are there because of some accident or sudden illness, a sudden death, and they find themselves in the probate court. Oh. And they didn't think about it ahead of time. And, and there are minor children involved, and mm. there are lawsuits to be filed, mm. and they don't understand the complexities that are involved in what they're now facing having to oh, come through the golly. probate court. We try very hard to make it simple for them. We try to guide them without mm -hmm. giving them legal advice, but guide them through the procedures of mm -hmm. opening an estate and getting started with the probate and doing the inventory. But if people would sit down and, and consider their family situation and just the fact that they may have children who right. are minors, they may not think that they have very much property at all. Maybe they don't. Right. But if, if they happen to be involved in an accident that leads to a death, then you do have a claim. You have an estate that you may not thought you had. Right. And, and just making some, some few preparations to prepare yeah. for either your death or your incapacity can make it much easier for your family. That's 